Welcome to Season 3 of Hollywood Unapologetic. My name is Orlando Delbert. I wanted to speak a little bit about sexual violence, Hollywood's boys club, stalkers, and the new Hollywood generation. In an earlier episode, I discussed pedophiles and other types of predatory behavior that unfortunately happen in certain circles in the entertainment world. I began thinking of what I know firsthand of any violence and safety issues in the workplace. The first thing that came to mind was of a co-worker shooting a firearm in a hallway back in New York. He was extremely frustrated <laughs> with management, which I'm sure you could imagine, which is somewhat common in the entertainment industry. As a whole, most New Yorkers in the entertainment industry have a lower tolerance for bullshit than their Los Angeles counterparts. Something more commonplace than a co-worker shooting a firearm in a hallway is a different type of violence and something not talked about openly enough. Women being approached and touched inappropriately by fellow co-workers is far more common than rape through physical means, but it's still a form of sexual violence. Stories I've heard range from married men propositioning women tastefully to several men grabbing a woman from different directions as she walked down a hallway. I've also been told of a couple of instances of physical rape years after the occurrences. The entertainment industry is very much a boys club. For the most part, Men hold most of the power positions, and some take it way too far. A few take it upon themselves to behave inappropriately. And as I was typing this last sentence, I remembered a story I was told by a female friend years ago. At the time, Tracy worked as an assistant to a well-known producer. Almost daily, and sometimes more than once a day, he would masturbate at her. He would hurry out of his office while he was climaxing and let things fly upon reaching her desk. Tracy acted as though... Nothing ever happened, which I'm sure helped motivate him in some ways. She kept quiet because she, because she needed the job, at least that's how she rationalized it to me. Of course, this isn't an industry-wide problem, but then again, maybe it is. This, this, these stories seem outlandish, but almost everything inside Hollywood is outlandish. I've met and worked with some of these uncouth individuals over the years and can see the overwhelming lack of respect they have towards others. An inflated ego and rail upon rail of cocaine can take some individuals outside the realms of reality. The studios and networks do take this seriously, but I don't know how much actually gets reported to the authorities. I'm under the impression that many instances don't actually get reported, partly due to the amounts of financial responsibilities that are often at stake, as well as based on the stories women have shared with me. Even as a man, I have been approached inappropriately by both men and women in the workplace with false promises of career advancement <laughs> without any kind of recourse. Thank you very much. I'll take the zero. I by no means want to infer that sexual violence runs rampant throughout the entertainment industry, but the handful of stories that, I've been, that have been shared with me range from sexual harassment, stalking, physical rape, and even hate crimes. It is unfortunate that these stories go largely unreported. Security is something that is taken very seriously within the studios. This started in the days of Ruto Valentino when Paramount Studios added extra iron filigree to the existing Bronson Gate after crazed female fans overwhelmed security and climbed the original gate. Studios today have around-the-clock security escorts and patrols, schedules set in security watches, fire prevention and safety inspectors, and on-site medical personnel in many cases. I was in the office of the top officer of one of the film studios one afternoon, and I caught a glimpse of a photo with several officers in tactical gear. They were standing on the landing skids of a helicopter high above Los Angeles. When I asked him about it, he told me that there were many former LAPD officers currently on staff. Many of them came from tactical units and had military training. The photo was a gift to him because he was also a former, former high-ranking <laughs> officer for the LAPD. He shared several stories with me about the security at the studio. A man was once being chased by the LAPD who had found his way onto the studio property. It was a mistake on his part because of the high level of training many of the security personnel have prior to joining the studio. The tactical skills of the security teams were most obvious when visible studio security presence was at its height shortly after the 9-11 incidents. The Federal Bureau of Investigation told employees at some of the studios about the possibility of direct terrorist threats. Additional security personnel was hired to check entering vehicles including searching trunks, storage areas, and undercarriages. Officers, along with work dogs, became commonplace. Additional barriers were brought in to create concrete mazes that everyone had to drive through to get into the studio lots, 
It was much like driving through a gauntlet of Kevlar concrete and steel. Even though the studios take precautions in the name of safety and security, it comes down to each one of us to do what we can to protect ourselves. This is not an easy thing to accomplish for some. Unfortunately, being in the limelight does draw unwanted attention. Sometimes one person's motives may not be clear and are hopefully caught before they go too far. A hot prowler break-in designation indicates that someone was home at the time of the police officer's arrival. On June 8, 2014, Joshua Corbett was arrested for residential, sorry, residential burglary at the house of actress Sandra Bullock. He was charged for felony, felony burglary, stalking, and with possession of an illegal machine gun, although prosecutors said he did not have the gun with him while on the property. Corbett was in Bullock's home for over an hour. After 1 a.m., Bullock heard a loud banging inside the house. She walks over to, to her bedroom door to close and lock it, and Corbett is standing there in the hallway. She slams the door and immediately calls 911. It's unclear, it's unclear if Corbett was there the whole time as she showered before going to bed. Upon arrival of police, Corbett was not inside Bullock's home, but was still on the property. Corbett began screaming, Sandy, I'm sorry, please don't press charges. Corbett was carrying with him a notebook with photographs of Bullock that were cut out of magazine. He also had several handwritten notes, one of which read, I will, for, I will forever be thinking of you and Louie, my son, as you are my wife by law, the law of God, and you belong to me and to you. Judge Rene Korn set Corbett's bail at $185,000. According to Deputy District Attorney Wendy Seagal, if convicted, the charges carry potential maximum seven years and four months in prison. Corbett pleaded non-guilty for breaking into Bullock's home on Wednesday, June 18, 2014. Authorities found in Corbett's home an arsenal of heavy weapons. He was charged with 19 felony counts, including seven counts of possessing a machine gun, two counts of possessing an assault weapon, and ten counts of possessing a destructive device. Those devices were described as tracer ammunition. Corbett's bail was set at two million. If convicted to the new charges, Corbett can face up to 12 years in prison. Although Corbett's motives may not be clear, many can assume that he may be a stalker, which is considered a kind of sexual violence. Other types of sexual violence do occur in our industry, and not only in Hollywood. Bollywood actress, I hope I say her name right, Preeti Zinta, filed a six-page complaint with the Mumbai police in which Zinta alleged that her former boyfriend, S. Wadia, had molested, abused, and threatened her in Mumbai's Wakadi Stadium in a, during an IPL match on May 30th, 2014. Although their relationship ended some time before, they are still business partners and co-owners of the cricket teams Kings, C, Kings 9 Punjab in the Indian Premier League. Oof, I'm having a little trouble today. <laughs> One of the things unique to the entertainment world is the story behind celebrity stalkers. Brad Pitt, Halle Berry, Catherine Zeta-Jones, Gwyneth Paltrow, Mel Gibson, Jennifer Lawrence, Miranda Kerr, Rihanna, Shia LaBeouf, and Anderson Cooper all have all had them. And this list just goes on and on and on. It seems that anyone who is, who is anyone has had stalkers. Sometime around 5 a.m. on September 12, 2014, police responded to a burglary in progress at the Hollywood Hill Hollywood Hills home of actor Keanu Reeves. He was awoken by noises coming from his library. When he made his way to the room, he found a woman in her 40s sitting calmly in a chair. He approached her and spoke with her. Reeves called 911 after the woman told him she was there to meet him. The whole time, Reeves remained calm. Upon arrival, Reeves told officers of the, of the LAPD that the woman did not belong there. She was not arrested, but was taken to a medical facility for evaluation. Police made a trespassing report. Reeves did not set the, the electronic detection system in his home, which is how the woman was able to gain access. At the time of this writing, police said the investigation is ongoing. In September 2013, Nicholas Fiore pled no contest for the felony stalking charges filed against him by actress and producer Ashley Tisdale. He was released after being arrested in June for violating a restraining order. Tisdale claimed Fiore threatened to shoot her and sent over 18,000 tweets on Twitter. For the next five years, the criminal protective order against him 
will remain in effect. The judge gave him credit for jail time served, five years probation, one year of outpatient counseling, and $350 in fines and fees. In March 2012, Leanne Zalumis, I think I said that right, broke, in, broke into the West London mansion of music and television producer Simon Cowell while he was home. Zalumis lay in his bed and went room to room with a brick in her hand. Police were eventually called after Cowell bumped into her. Singer and songwriter John Bon Jovi was targeted in a string of bur burglaries in New Jersey in 2011. Nicholas Tracy was arrested after he set off an alarm at a neighbor's house, the last of the homes he was robbing. He was charged with four counts of third-degree bur burglary and three counts of second-degree theft after stealing over $500,000 worth of jewelry. More than $100,000 worth of jewelry which was stolen belonged to Bon Jovi's wife. Singer and actress Paulina Rubio's Miami home was broken into back in 2009, and the burglar took, took only her house keys and a remote control for her front gate. Yeah, that's kind of scary. <laughs> Singer and actress Jennifer Lopez had an uninvited guest living in her pool house in 2013. This was on a property of her mansion in the Hamptons for a few days, where he walked around the estate freely in plain view of the neighbors and even posted photographs onto his Facebook page. In 2012, producer and actor Sean Combs, a.k.a. Diddy, had someone break into his mansion in East Hampton, New York. Quagmine Taylor had a change of clothes, drank some Chirac, Chiro, ah, Chirac, <laughs> and slept in his bed. I'm having a real hard time with names today. <laughs> Please bear with me, guys. Daniel Bedard scaled a fence and broke into singer and songwriter Celine Dion's Canadian mansion in 2011. Bedard ate some of, some of her food and drew himself a bath before the police arrived. He was standing at the top of the stairs when the police arrived and asked, Hey guys, what are you doing there? And their response, what are you doing here? <laughs> and this is by far my favorite one of these stories. In September 2010, Damon T. Dana moved from Germany to Los Angeles to become an actor. He thought by breaking into actor and director Sylvester Stallone's yard and doing martial arts and working out, he could prove that he can star in an action film. Salone's security guards grabbed, grabbed Dana, and he was arrested for trespassing. Oh, and I almost forgot. Dana knocked out a pit bull prior to his martial arts presentation. What makes a stalker become so obsessed? What motivates them to be disturbingly fanatical? One might believe that someone who is friendly in a role in television or who is very physically attractive may be a target. But the reality is that anyone in the public eye can generate unwanted attention. A stalker is, is often not someone who is in love with a particular celebrity, but someone who honestly believes the, the celebrity is in love with him or her. Another common trait among stalkers is the honest belief that, that they will rescue the object of their, of their infatuation from danger, while ironically, they are the ones creating the threat. Obsession turned deadly in the case of actress Rebecca Schaefer. Schaefer was known for starring in the sitcom My Sister Sam. Her stalker, Robert Bardo, shot her outside the front, front steps of her apartment building back in 1989. Since then, law enforcement and other criminal experts have been able to profile the celebrity stalker. They often have criminal histories, psychiatric disorders, and have had some involvement with drug abuse. There is often a tipping point that causes, that causes the stalker to become violent. Bardo became angered after Schaefer's semi-nude scenes in the film film scenes from the class struggle in Beverly Hills. He didn't think the scene was in alignment with the morals of the character she played in My Sister Sam. Following Schaefer's death, new anti-stalking laws were, were enacted. This included the 1994 Driver's Privacy Protection Act, which prevents the Department of Motor Vehicles from releasing private addresses because Bardo was able to find Schaefer easily through her driving, through her, through her driving records. The LAPD also formed a special one-of-a-kind threat management unit to deal with stalkers. Stalkers often wreak havoc on those they are stalking. I remember when, a, when an obsessed fan was following singer Britney Spears years ago. Japanese businessman, wow, Yashako Shozawa, <laughs> sorry about that guys, came to America on a tourist visa, but his sole purpose was to follow Spears from her life in Louisiana to Los Angeles on a 37-city obsession tour. No one knew about him until he confronted the security guards at her Hollywood Hills home. As it turned out, he had been using the internet to track her life and her concert tour, 
He was taking photos in close proximity to Spears, including a picture for a limousine leaving one of the concert venues. Spears filed two restraining orders against him when he wrote on the back of a photo, I'm chasing you. California law requi requires that a credible threat needs to be established in association with this behavior. This is true in most states since the state needs to be satisfied that the elements of stalking fit the criteria. In Spears' case, the LAPD asked federal agents to place Shazawa on a no-fly list barring him from entering the United States. Sometimes the stalker in love with a celebrity feels that someone else is in the way. This was the case with Michael Douglas's stalker, Dawnette Knight, who threatened to cut up the actor's wife, Catherine Zeta-Jones, and then feed her to her dogs. Zeta-Jones was believed to be the obstacle in their relationship between Douglas and the stalker. After a much publicized trial in which both Zeta Jones and Douglas gave extremely harrowing testimonies, Knight pleaded guilty. She was sentenced to three years in prison. And as I previously mentioned, these are, these are our times when the stalker feels that the subject they are obsessed with is in need of rescuing. This was the case with singer and songwriter Sheryl Crow's accused stalker, Ambrose Capos. Capos made a connection be between himself and Crow by referring to Homer's epic poem, The Odyssey, and fantasizing himself as Odysseus, rescuing his Penelope. Capos approached, Capos approached Crow after a 2003 concert, but she was rushed away into her limousine. He then, Crow, he then called Crow's sister, identifying himself as Crow's spiritual twin. He told her that God was speaking to him and asked to speak to Cheryl. Capos was found innocent of stalking Crow. He said this could have been better handled if it was recognized for what it was, an honorable man trying to court a good woman and a simple no thank you from her or her duly authorized agents would have been satisfactory. In this series and in the books that I've written, I've continually stressed the importance of planning and the due diligence you should have in being aware of your surroundings. I offer these examples to illustrate that the entertainment, that the entertainment industry has its own hidden criminal element and dangers lurking in the shadows, which are sometimes frightening which can be life-threatening. Unfortunate events such as the subject matter touched upon in this episode are by no means an indication of the state of, state of affairs in the, throughout, the, throughout the entertainment industry. However, these incidents do happen and are taken very seriously by the studios and by law enforcement agencies. So you should take them seriously too. Keep your eyes open. Remember, your well-being and security requires vigilance on your part. The world is greatly influenced by what is seen on the screen and heard on the radio. Let's be the new Hollywood generation. Let's give them something that will drive everyone to do something bigger and to make a positive difference in the world. Something I'd like to leave you with. We are all in it together. Each and every one of you is an important part of our future. You are important to the lives of those who surround you. You are important to your communities. You are, you are important to our industry. No matter what, remain optimistic and focused on your goal. Never stop believing in yourself. Always remember, you are the key to your own success. Take a breath, move forward. Together, let's create a revival, a resurgence of Hollywood, and bring back the all to cinema. Be an active part of the new Hollywood generation. You are a representative of the new Hollywood generation. And please subscribe to our channel and share. Interviews are coming. <laughs> Don't forget to check out our other videos in this series and follow the link below to check out our swag. You are a representative of the new Hollywood generation. Join Hollywood Unapologetic in our quest to positively empower one another, to empower our industry as we speak openly to industry professionals about the true pursuit of our Hollywood dreams and in life. Hollywood Unapologetic is a continuation of the Pollyanna's tear soap Battlefields of Hollywood a survival guide against the cynicism and the hypocritical series of books designed to help you better prepare for success. It is now our time to strive to be a better version of ourselves and to be inclusive of one another. We, as a community, can grow together and be the change our industry needs. We can find unity together and be the change our future needs. We are the new Hollywood generation. Welcome to Hollywood Unapologetic.